Welcome to Lemmys.com and our lab video series on BGP. You can find a complete list of BGP video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. So when it comes to BGP configuration, you may find yourself dealing with route filters a lot just because that's the way you control uh, what routes you want to advertise or learn. So it is very important for you to have a good understanding on the topic. So in this video, we're going to look at route filter with prefix list, filter list, and route maps. You can see there's various ways for you to accomplish route filter. And then we're going to look at a standard and well-known community policy list and a more advanced feature like an outbound route filter or ORF. Now from our network diagram, we have seven routers we're dealing with, R1 through R7. And at this point, all these routers should have been configured with whether it's IBGP or BGP with their Leapback 10 through 12 advertised. And in the previous lab, we also convert some of these sessions into peer groups and peer template and even the R7 and place that under the VRF BGP. So just keep those in mind when we go through the lab and make sure that you perform configuration under the appropriate sections. Okay, so let's begin our lab with our task number one with route filter and prefix list. So we need to configure R5 to stop advertising its loopback 12 to R2, and we are not allowed to use route map, and we must use a single prefix list command. So R5 is over here, having to advertise that to, or actually not advertise loopback 12 to R2. As you can see, we still want the loopback 12 to be advertised to R1. And we just need to be aware that R5 has the peer template configured. Okay, so there's actually two ways of configuring the prefix list. The first, which is allowing the routes that you want to advertise just using the permit command, which is what we're going to do since we only have two loopbacks to advertise, and that is loopback 10 and 11. And we can kind of summarize those under the, we can scroll down to 5500 slash 23. Okay, the other way is obviously is to do a deny on the loopback 12 IP itself and then permit everything else, but that will require uh, at least two lines of command and we are restricted just to use that one line prefix list. So on R2, let's do a quick, uh, before we make any changes, a show command to the R5 loopback 12, 5521, enter. You can see that it's learning that directly from R5, although it's a loopback. So to find out exactly, you can also do a show IP set of this so it will resolve the next top IPs for you automatically and that is the serial IPs directly connected to R5. Okay so going on to R5 let's configure our prefix list and we're going to call it 2R2 and we're just going to permit loopback 10 and 11 and just using a single command, we can do a slash 23 because that encompasses both loopback 10 and 11, and then do a less standard equal 24 because each of those subnets are slash 24. And then under router BGP 100, we have to apply our prefix list to the neighbor. And now neighbor in this case is R2, so loopback of R2 is 0 0.2. And if the question mark, you have an option right here for prefix list is filter update to or from the neighbor. So prefix list, and we call it 2R2, and then we have to specify the direction as well. In this case, it's outbound to R2. Okay, so if you do show IP BGP neighbor 1C216.0.2, advertise you can see that even though the filter has been applied to the neighbor r2 r5 seems to be or still be advertising their loopback 12 to r2 and that's because just because you have those command apply it doesn't mean that it takes the effect and that's how bgp configuration works with the filter you can make the whole lot of policy or filter route filter policy changes but it's not going to take effect immediately until you either reset the peer or go through a route refresh or soft configuration reset which will look at in the following task. But for now, uh, easiest ways to make it take effect is just to clear the neighbor. So clear IP BGP 02, and that's going to essentially take down the BGP session. As you can see, it went down and it came back up. Okay, now if you show IP BGP prefix detail, you can see the prefix list 2R2 has four hit counts. And if we take another look at our routes is being advertised to R2, you can see that it's only advertised loopback 10 and 11 now and no longer advertised loopback 12. Okay, so we know that our prefix list filter is working. And now if you hop back to R2 and do a show IP set, you can see that the next top of that is now pointing out the interface to R1. If we do show IP route 5521, 
it doesn't even have the routes in the routing table anymore. And the reason why it show next hop as a router one is just following a default route. And the reason being, when R5 advertises loopback IPs to R1 and R2, once R1 has received those routes, it does not re-advertise it to R2 due to the IBGP rules. Okay, so that's why R2 no longer learns the R5 actual loopback address. Okay, so basically R2 just have to follow the default route. Once it hits R1, R1 knows exactly how to reach the R5 loopback 12. That's how the, um, the packet eventually gets to R5. So if you're trying to do a ping to 5521 from R2, it should still be pingable because R2 follow default routes. All right, so that's pretty straightforward using a prefix list for a filter. Move on to task number two, route filter with filter list. We need to configure R3 to stop learning all routes, including future routes originated from AS300. And we need to use a soft reconfiguration to activate the filter without taking down the BGP session. Okay, since the task mandate sets, the configuration that we're about to do has to take care of all the future routes. So you can't really do by the prefix, since we don't know what the future prefix is going to be. But what we do know is it's always going to be originated from AS300. And this is where the route, or this is where the filter list comes in. The way the filter list work is instead of doing a filter based on the route or the prefix, is actually look at the AS number in the AS path and filter based on the presence of the AS number that you specify as part of the filter list. Okay, so in this case, anything that's being originated from AS300 needs to be block. And I think this part right here is supposed to say just from R4, I guess we missed that. So I'll make sure I add that into the document. Okay, in order to build a filter list, you first need to create a AS path that will do a matching of the AS number for you in the AS path of the route. So we're going to perform our configuration on R3. And this is going to be all the routes that's coming from or originated from AS300 or R4 in this case coming into R3. Okay, so we'll command for that is IP AS path. So we need to create an IP AS path access list. And then you have to give it a number. So we're just going to use 10. And then it's just a structure of this is very similar to a access list where you can do the permit or deny of something. But in this case, that something is the AS number. So we can just easily do a 300, but that may not include just the route that's being originated from the AS300. It's going to include everything that's passing through and originated from the AS300. So what we need to do is to use a regular expression and then make sure that we match just the route that's being originated at the AS300. Let me make sure we put the underscore on the front because if we leave it out like this, that means that it will catch any routes that's originated by the AS number that ends with 300, not just the 300. Okay, so just to make sure that doesn't happen, we'll put the underscore in the front, which you should designate a space and press enter. So as you can see, configuring BGP is very handy to know a little bit about regex because you use that quite a bit when you for example, configure AS path right here. So it's good to have that knowledge. Uh, next, we're going to have to allow everything else because we just want to deny the routes that's originated from AS300. And that means we're going to have to do permit. And with regex speaking, by doing a catch all or permit all, we do a dot and then a star or an asterisk, which is a dot means any character and a start asterisk means zero or more of that character. So that basically takes care of matching all. Okay, you can do show IP BGP. And R3, just make a quick note right now, R3 is actually learning routes of R4 loopback from R4 right here. As you can see, it's being originated from the AS300. Now, we can also do a special show command just to test out our AS path prefix list and see if it's actually working or not by doing a show IP BGP filter list and then 10. Okay, as you can see that R4 loopbacks routes are gone now because they match the AS path that we have created or access list that we have created. So that's just a quick way to verify if your configuration or the structure of your AS path access list is correct or not. So now we're going to have to put that into effect by doing a router BGP 200. And then before we do the filter command, we want to configure a soft reconfiguration. So a soft reconfiguration command has been around for a while now. And what it does is it allows the router to buffer all the routes that's being learned from a neighbor. And that way, when you configure or modify your route filter, instead of, you know, require 
the BGP session to be taken down and then relearning all the route is just use what it have in the cache and kind of replay that route through the filter itself and then basically have those filter in effect immediately without taking down the BGP session. And obviously the downside of that is it requires a memory to buffer those routes, but just for the demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and enable a soft reconfiguration facing uh, router 4. And you can specify, although inbound is only the options available. So inbound, and then to apply the filter, 34.4, the command is filterless, and then 10, which is our AS path access list number with the direction of inbound. Okay, so we can do a show IP BGP. You can see that uh, R3 is still learning R4 loopback routes from R4. So like we mentioned, that we need to utilize or leverage our soft reconfiguration command. But first let's take a look at and make sure it's enabled. So you can see right here, we do show IP BGP neighbor and look for the word soft. There's a soft reconfiguration for inbound is allow. So that means we can go ahead and do clear IP BGP 1634.4, question mark. Normally if, if you uh, press enter right here, it would take down the BGP session, but we do not want to do that. So we're going to go with the soft option, which is soft reconfig inbound and outbound updates. And then for the direction, which is inbound. Okay, give it a second and then you do a show IP BGP one more time. You can see that the R3 no longer learns the R4 loopback routes from R4. Okay, although it's still learning that those routes from R1 and R6. Okay, so if you do a trace route, 4401, source from loopback, actually it should be loopback 10. You can see that instead of going to R4 directly, it has to traverse R6 before it reaches R4. Okay, and that's how you would use a filter list to perform a route filtering. Okay, next is our task number three with route filter with route map. So we need to configure R6 to stop learning all the routes from R4 that have traversed AS100. And we must use route map and we need to use a route refresh to activate the filter without taking down BGP session. Okay, so anytime that you perform a route filter based on the autonomous system number, that's going to immediately imply that you would need to create an AS path access list just like we did earlier. But since we are mandated to use route map, so we can also do a match based on the AS path. So it's obvious you can see that you can either apply the AS path access list using the filter list, which is what we did in task two, or using a route map. Okay, so in this case, we're going to do route map, and that's going to be on R6. So going back to the diagram, R6, uh, for the route being received from R4, so anything that's coming through across the BGP session from R4 that has the route that's traversed AS100, we want to drop that. First is to create AS path access lists, uh, which is going to give it the number 20. And then we're going to want to match it. So the logic is a little different now. Before, when you use the filter list, you actually specify the permit or deny based on whether or not you want to pass or drop the routes. But once you use the route map, the permit or deny is done at the route map level and not at the AS path access list level. So as far as the access path access list, all you need to do is just to match the route. So you're always going to use permit and not so much of the deny. and the requirement is to match the route that's passed through AS100. Obviously, you can just type in a uh, 100 like that, but that's going to match anything that has a string of 100 in the AS path, and that's include, for example, 1100 or 1001. Okay, in order to come up with the regex that match just the AS100 in the path, you want to put underscore at the front and the back. So that basically represents a space or whether it's the beginning string, which is the char character or the end string, which is the uh, dollar sign. Okay, so just by doing that, it will match this as well as uh, this. Okay, so enter. And then same thing, we can do a test on our BGP filter or AS path access list by using the show IP BGP filter 
120 and the only type of route that we're seeing is the one that has the AS100 in the AS path. As you can see, every single line that we see right here has the AS number 100 in them, whether it's being originated or it's just passing through, okay? Now that we know that the access list or AS path access list work, we're going to have to create a route map. We're going to call it from a4 and then we're going to deny sequence 5 and we're going to match by our AS path access list of 20. So you can see that we are performing deny right here at the route map level. Okay, so if there is a match on the AS path, then deny the route. That's how it read. And we just have to make sure we don't forget to permit everything else. Otherwise, it's just going to drop everything by default. And then we go to to apply the route. Go to router BGP 200. And then for that particular neighbor, which is 46.4, we apply the route map of from R4 in. Okay, let's show IPBGP. You can still see some routes from R4 that doesn't contain the... Actually, just to be clear on that, we can also put a filter on the neighbor. 46.4. Uh, actually, I forgot the route at the end. Okay, as you can see, this, this routes right here does not contain the AS100. It's, it's still in the round table. That means, once again, the filter that we just configured is not yet taking effect. So this is going back to the use the route refresh to activate the filter without taking down BGP session. So the better way of activating a filter for existing routes is to use a route refresh. And what it is, is the capability that's being exchanged between the BGP neighbors. So what it does is that a router will be able to make a request to its neighbor to resense the routes okay without it having to keep a cache copy locally like the soft reconfiguration features so that way you don't have to tie it up or waste your RAM resources for that but obviously instead of the RAM resource is going to be the network bandwidth that you're going to have to utilize when those copy of the routes getting resent from the neighbor as part of the refresh and the way to check if the refresh capability is available is you can look at the show IPBGP neighbor and then Let's just look for a CA, which is the capability right here, route refresh. It's been exchanged between R4 and R6, and this includes advertised and received. Okay, the way to utilize the route refresh is to do a clear IPBGP with the neighbor IP. And instead of doing a soft, we just a question mark and then specify the direction whether it's in or out okay so in and now if you do show IP BGP neighbor route so we have to an extra dot there route and you can see how the R6 drops out the routes that contains the AS100 in their path so scrolling back up so any of these routes are have been essentially dropped by R6 as it comes in from R4. And that's because these all these guys matches the AS path access list that we have created earlier. And we have a deny statement on them at the route map. Okay, so the only thing that R6 is sliding through right now is the route that's being originated in the AS300, which is the R4 loopback addresses. Okay, so that completes our task number three.